Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of The Viewpoint and this time Jaddy Josh, Champagne Charlie and myself Lucas Jackson are going to be discussing all things NXT TakeOver War Games. We're going to delve right into things and we're going to begin with discussing the men's War Games match which is the team of the Undisputed Era, all four members of them, facing the kings of NXT. Uh, that's Pat McAfee, Pete Dunn, and the NXT Tag Team Champions, Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch. Uh, we're mm-hmm. going to kick things off with uh, Jazzy Josh speaking. What, what do you think about this match? Um, I think it would be way too obvious to not have the Undisputed Era win this one. Because the Undisputed Era have been in every single... Um, every single war games. Pete Dunne has been in a lot of them as well. Mm. So to not have the undisputed era win this match based on experience alone is just my view on it. But Ernie Lorcan and Danny Birch finally getting some form of recognition for being (laughs) the most underrated tag team ever. (laughs) It's it's kind of weird this because they were discussed about being called up to the main roster at one point. Um, yeah, Birch, I think early early on in um, this kind of pandemic wrestling, um, but now they're back on it. They're yeah. back on it. Energy Tag Champions, and they are on a takeover. So that's good for them, I guess. Absolutely. And so you yeah. think Undisputed Era? So uh, Charlie, yeah, I think Undisputed Era. I think because, uh, as uh, Jazzy Josh just said, that the Undisputed Era have been in every um, you know war games. And if you want to try and get a team established, you know, you know, like this new team, the Kings, as they call them, of NXT, you need to give them a big, a big win to, as for, for that platform. So I think it would be a good opportunity, like a kind of changing, a passing of the torch kind of thing, because it's only a matter of time before members of the Undisputed Era are called up to main roster, I think. Mm. So with saying that, I think it's time for a bit of a paradigm shift. So I think the Kings of NXT take the win for the, for the, uh, for the War Games. It wouldn't be the first time Pete Dunne was part of a winning team against the Undisputed Era in War Games. True. There we are. Totally true. I like the, um, I know you're the AEW correspondent, you've got the paradigm shift mentioned in there. <laughs> yeah. That, that. Um, yeah, I side with you, Champagne, though. I think um, you can't call yourself the Kings of NXT and then lose. I think that would be a bit exactly. silly. Um, I think this is a way of, obviously, Pat McAfee, he's transitioning as a, well, from a broadcaster into being a wrestler. I think this is a smart way to kind of get him a win over established stars, but without it having to be him beating Adam Cole. Um, or him be- beating, you know, Roderick Strong or something like that. But obviously, his team can. I think it looked they look very dark. Cause the team, in my opinion, obviously, uh, it went to be uh, Rich Holland, wasn't it? Not Pete Dunn, but obviously, Rich Holland got injured. Yeah. Um, I think it always looks a bit weird, and so it'd be very weird if they just like end it here. Um, so yeah, I'll go with um, the Kings of NXT to win this one. So next up to discuss is going to be the match for the NXT North American Championship. Now this is one which um, has flip-flopped from the last takeover to now. As as we, ended, as we ended the last takeover, the champion was still Damian Priest. He defended against Johnny Gargano. We then had NXT Halloween Havoc, um, which saw Johnny Gargano beat uh, Damian Priest to win the championship back. And then we've had a weird thing where the debuting, or the, I don't know if he debuted that night, but I think he definitely was, he definitely new to the roster anyway. Leon Ruff, he defeated Johnny Gargano uh, just a couple of weeks ago. So now the three men, uh, that, is, that being Johnny Gargano, Damian Priest, the former champions, and Leon Ruff, the current champion, having a match for that championship. So I'll turn to you first, Champagne Charlie. Who do you have for this? This is a really, really odd one because, like I said, of how quickly that it's flipped between the uh, between the three wrestlers, the the current champion, like I said, he came in like so quickly yeah. and won it, which is um, which is not something they normally do. Was yeah, not in NXT anyway. Yeah, just because Wait. I I just because I, I think I'm gonna say Johnny Gargano. You're gonna go Gargano. So yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I don't have any reason behind it. I don't have any reason behind it. I just think because he's more more established out of the lot, so. That's why I think it. Fair enough. Well, do you, I think you've become the first three-time champion as well. 
in NXT yeah. Yeah. any belt, I think. He was the first um, two-time champion, I think. So Yeah, so... He was the first two-time North American champion. I'd like to see Gargano pick it up again, just because I, I like this hill run that's going on. Um, poor Leon Ruff. With, no offence to him. He's pretty talented, considering he's fairly new in NXT, but he has no chance in hell. <laughs> Un- unless, somehow, I know Triple Threat's meant to be no DQ, but unless somehow there's a double count out or something no. with, with Priest and Gargano, that is the only f- possible way I can see Ruff keep, keep keeping the belt. Mm. So or who are you going them, with? Or they knock each other out. I'm going with Gargano. You're with Gargano as well? More, more because I want to, less because I have an idea. Yeah. This is, this is really hard to call because you've got mm. these three people have all been the champion over about the past month or so. Um, yeah. Neil Huff's debuting. Johnny Gargano obviously is someone who's really tenured, over tenured, you could argue, in NXT. Damien Priest, obviously, he's picked up a couple of wins on takeovers. Um, so, weirdly, I, I don't even like him, really, but I'm going to go for Damien Priest. I think nice. they're just going to go back to him just being champion again. And that way, I think he, he'll keep his nice little run of takeover wins, you know, yeah. going. Um, because it's a very weird thing that they should do this, hot potato in a title. And I don't think that they've done it it's in a long weird. time. It's um, weird. And if, and, if, and if anything, it kind of takes credibility from the title if they do that. Yeah, I think so too. Um, and so, yeah, I think Damien, I think Damien Priest, and it, again, I can't have any other reason, but knowing this now, Liam Ruffin of a time. Anyway, we are going to discuss uh, the two, obviously, main matches, or what I thought the main matches, anyway, coming up very soon. Before that, we're going to discuss the status of NXT champion Finn Balor. And so we're going to go around and just ask a question, like, obviously, he's still not medically cleared, uh, you know, to wrestle. You know, this follows NXT TakeOver 31, where both him and Carlo Riley were injured. Carlo Riley has returned. Carlo Riley's injury was obviously broken teeth, and he's back, and that's fine. But Finn Balor, he's draw. He's not been cleared to wrestle. We're not given a date of when he'll be cleared to wrestle. And so my kind of question is, like, they've been very quick to strip people of titles before. You know, especially in NXT. It was the main roster they've allowed, obviously, part-time champions like Goldberg and Brock Lesnar, etc. That's more established. But NXT, you know, I mean, you know, I'm going to go around. Obviously, last week, based on NXT, he said that, he, you know, he was watching the the men's war game match, you know, with beady eyes and that. But should he be stripped of the title, you know, if he can't defend it? I I, I think yes and no because I, I think maybe the reason they haven't stripped him is one, they've only just stripped a champion before him mm. due to injury, and two, maybe that injury is not going to keep him out as long as people are thinking. Yeah. Maybe I they're think, hoping it'll be within this month that he returns. Yeah, I think the injury may not be as bad as people seem to be letting on. Mm-hmm. And like, as Porter said, they want to basically, um, you know, k- kind of not repeat history with what happened yeah. with, uh, with, Ka- with Karrion Cross. So uh, they're, letting, they're, they're letting him appear on, on TV. It's kind of like um, when Stone Cold broke his neck in the 90s, yeah. you know what I mean? He was still showing up on TV because he was drawing money, that mm. kind of thing. So I think it's kind of like a similar thing, but the injury is not to that extent. That or kind of when thing? you had you had Trish Stratus who got injured during her record-breaking run as women's champion back in the day. Oh, yeah. yeah and yeah, she, she was still able to be on TV because obviously she's yeah. Trish Stratus. So I think as well, it's helpful this pay-per-view being with the war games because it means that necessarily the energy champion doesn't need to be uh, there because the attraction yeah. is war games, and so obviously, and, yeah. and they're blessed to have two stables. Yeah, the like, match itself are. is the is the attraction. The attraction. But, but I do think if it goes on into next month, I think that's when we need to maybe look at it and be like, well, maybe we need to strip it. But for now, Finn Balor is still the NXT champion, um, and he has obviously targeted people during those in that men's match, and so perhaps we will see something happen maybe at the pay per view as well to obviously indicate who will be Finn's next challenger. Anyway, so moving on match-wise of the card, we have an interesting one. We have a strap match, which I believe is the is it the first in NXT history, um, but is the first since Daniel Bryan and The Fiend had won the Royal Rumble this year, in WWE at least, um, as Dexter Loomis is taking on Cameron Grimes. Now, this also kind of happened, you know, early on in the year. They kind of had a few matches, including, what was the one they had? 
um, at uh, Halloween Havoc. It was in a ha haunted house or something. What was it called? Some, yeah, some, yeah, yeah, some yeah. sort of a haunted kind of thing. Anyway, and that, that, they had a blindfold match recently as well. Yeah, the, the whole rivalry seems to be built up around these um, gimmick, Weird, matches. gimmick matches. Yeah, um, but mm. the strap match is obviously is a gimmick match, but it is focused very much on you know violence and a bit more of a. But it is a violent. It is a violent match. That kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, because obviously the strap is uh, is legal. Yeah, is, is the weapon. Um, but who have we got for this? I think I think I think Loomis won. He's he definitely won the one where it was in a house, a Halloween Havoc, um, that weird one that was cinematic. He won that one. Um, that and, was pretty weird, yeah. Yeah, but it, it ended in the ring, didn't it? I think. Yeah. Ended in the ring. Anyway, yeah, it was basically like um, House of Horrors, but NXT version. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Jay Josh, who have you got for this one, this trap match? Dexter Loomis, Cameron Grimes. Um, I'm going to go Dexter Loomis. He seems to have the momentum in his corner. I definitely think he has Grimes' number in this. He, he's won their last few matches, mm. and he's won more matches between the two of them than Grimes has, so I'm going to give it to Loomis again. But Loomis is one of my favourites in NXT, so I'm always going to back him up. I um, I, I agree with uh, Jazzy Josh on this. I'm I'm picking Dexter Loomis more because of the uh, you know, kind of the mentality that the gimmick has, that kind of thing. It's pretty much a similar gimmick that he had when he was Sam Shaw in the, in Samuel Shaw in TNA, isn't it? That well, kind of uh, well, funny you say that because yeah. This Dex Loomis character is almost identical to his last run in TNA as Sam yeah. Shaw. Yeah, exactly. He, is. he wasn't always this gimmick. He was Sam Shaw in TNA. Yeah. He, he came Before... through boot camp, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. He, he, he joined yeah. in gut gotcha. check. It's not British boot camp. He's not British for that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but I thought, yeah. Um, but yeah, he, he, this gimmick debuted when WWE decided to do this weird stalker thing with Christy Hemi and Sam Shaw. That was a weird thing. It really it was. It was weird, but people loved it. So, yeah. I've got to give it credit where it's due. So, uh, Champagne Show. Yeah, Lo Loomis. Loomis. You've got Loomis. Because, got Loomis. Because, because, because it's like, you know, something violent like this and the character's uh, yeah. mindset, it's kind of uh, that kind of, you know, sadistic, <laughs> psychotic uh, big edge, I think. So, yeah, I, I get a thing as well. Cameron Grimes is someone who's just not going to get a win yet. He's very talented, he's superb on the mic, you know, got something different for him, but they don't seem to want to push him. Dexter Loomis obviously got injured for a little bit, so I think this is like he's re... Come, he's of, come back. Yeah, he's come injured. back kind of thing. And sadly, Grimes had to be at the expense. So yeah, we all agree, Dexter Loomis for that one. So the final match to discuss is, of course, the other War Games match, which is the Women's War Games, and that is Team Shotzi, which comprises of Shotzi Blackheart, Ember Moon, Rhea Ripley and Io Shirai. Um, against Team Candice. So that's Candice LeRae, Dakota Kai, Raquel Gonzalez and Tony Storm. Both Thanks. good teams. Um, so we we'll start with you, Champion Charlie. What do you think of this one? I think, uh, this. Uh, first off, both evenly matched, yeah. first and foremost. But with the adding of Ember Moon last of this past week and also with uh, you know the champion being there, Io Shirai, just the whole team, I have to go with uh, Team Shotzi on this one. What do you think, Josh? I think it's hard not to go with Team Shotzi. I, I was predicting in my head that Shirai would be the last member. I didn't even realise they had um, announced yeah, it until you mentioned it now. But yeah, for Shirai alone and Ember Moon, like the team is filled with former NXT Women's Champions. So yeah, it's, thing gotta, is, be, it's gotta be Team Shotzi. Thing is, this is why I put this match on the last, like, you know, I know there might be someone watching going, oh, women, but honestly, yeah. like, you, you've got Io Shirai on the same team as, like, Ember Moon and Rhea Ripley. Like, <laughs> this is going to be incredible. I mean, no disrespect, obviously, to what the men yeah. will do. I'm sure that'll be decent. But this match, I think, is going to be a, be a show sealer. Um, this, this, yeah. this match yeah. has four former NXT or current women's um, champions, including NXT mad. UK. Yeah. Yeah, it's mad. Yeah. I think as well, the NXT women's division need, 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 need some time to obviously showcase what they can do. Yeah. And this is the what this is the match to do it in. I'm almost going for Team Shotzi based on that. I think obviously, you know, there's a lot of yeah. The, even though Team Candice is quite is quite strong, um, yeah. it's some talented women in there. I just think you can't really have the NXT Women's Champion on the team and they lose. So for yeah. that reason alone, 
and because of Io Shirai, I think, yeah. And I'm just getting a vision out of Io Shirai moonsaulting off that uh, uh, page again. <laughs> that is going to be, cool. be incredible. Um, so, yeah, team shots, we all agree with that one. So that's our picks. Um, you know, they're all kind of in the line, obviously. We're, we are recording before this week's NXT, so more matches get added. Then that's their fault. Um, I doubt they will, though. Um, <laughs> that's, that's not our problem. That's theirs. That's their <laughs> fault. That's our problem. Not our problem. <laughs> but, you know, we are in the penultimate uh, of this. So, obviously, we will return for uh, TLC predictions, which at the moment, and they're all out be doing something different, at the moment is the last scheduled pay-per-view event of 2020. Um, that, TLC that is two weeks being time. My, possibly my favourite non-road to WrestleMania pay-per-view. Oh, interesting. And, of course, we're going to be doing something different on the channel, so we'll keep that. Um, please subscribe to our Instagram, which is new, um, at Talking Crap Indie. We're going to be posting short clips of our podcast and our uh, news bits and that. And don't forget, the Underground Press is now airing Tuesdays and Fridays, with the exception of Tuesdays, where there is a NXT, WWE, or AEW Event. The moment we hit 100 subscribers, or the moment I realise we've hit 100 subscribers, we will be announcing our first piece of Talking Crap merch. Yeah, you heard oh. it here. So get subscribing, get liking, get sharing, get commenting. Until then, uh, we see you on Friday for Grilla Press uh, with Champagne and Maya. Um, until then, stay safe, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Goodbye. Take Bye. it easy.